Hi, what's up, everybody, and uh, welcome back to 1949. We have the Braves at the Pirates, and um, once again, the uh, Pirates have been slipping recently, and uh, they're starting to slip out of the uh, contention for the National League pennant. Pete Reeser will lead this off for the Braves up against Bill Worley, and he uh, takes a ball and then uh, swings and misses that uh, pitch. One and one the count. Two and one is that one missed. Reeser having a very good start to the season. Hits a ground ball over there to uh, Castiglione. It's short. He throws to first for the out. One away. Connie Ryan now is up there. He takes a strike. 0 and one the count on Ryan and swings and misses. The next one is 0 and 2 on him. That's a piss pitch inside that misses. One and two the count on Ryan. That's a foul ball. One and two still. And sinker is low, two and two. Worley three and three on the season as that one's fouled off. Three twenty-two ERA, three and three, and it um, uh, really he's had a little bit of bad luck in some of those games as you may have uh, remember seeing here. Connie Ryan's still fouling pitches off left and right. Full count now on him, and uh, he hits one over to left field. Ralph Kiner's got that for the out two away, and it's Marv Rickard now. Rickard takes a strike. Oh, and one's the count on him, and there's another strike. Oh, and two. And he chases that one low, and down he goes, and we go to the bottom of the first inning. It's uh, Ralph Kiner leading this off for the Pirates against Warren Spawn. Kiner takes the ball. Spawn at 2-4 and four, um, with a 3.57 ERA. So some good pitching uh, by both of these pitchers, and uh, both, I would say, have been a little bit unlucky. 2-2, two and two, the count on Kiner. There's one in close. It's a full count on him now, and that's high, and that'll be a leadoff walk to Kiner, and here comes Pete Castiglione. Now, Kiner can run, but he can't really steal, so we'll see what we do with him. Castiglione, and uh, there's a throw to first base, nothing doing, and Castiglione fouls the first pitch off. Owen won the count. There's one popped up behind the plate, out of play. It's Owen, too. We could bun with Castiglione. We're not going to do it now. And there's a screwball that has him reaching and packing, and down he goes. I figure bunting with a runner on at first base in the bottom of the first is uh, kind of an odd sign, but we could do it. It might actually be appropriate for 1949. Up next, Eddie Bachman, and another throwback to first, nothing doing. Bachman takes the ball low, 1-0 the count, and uh, there's another one down and away, and he reaches up, fouls that one back. So 1-1 one one now the count on him. Bachman, 256 the average, but with that uh, 346 on base percentage and 400 slugging percentage, he's actually doing quite well. Three home runs so far this season. 1-2 and two now the count, and 2-2 two and two is that one missed. 2-2. Two and two. Pitch is in there, and he chases that one down and away for strike three. Two away, and here comes Dixie Walker. Two strikeouts so far for Spawn, and uh, Walker hits a ground ball over to uh, Spawn, who throws the first for the out, and we'll go to the uh, top of the second inning. Uh, it's uh, Jim Russell up there for the Braves. He takes the ball and then a strike. One and one the count now on Russell. There's a little pop-up, and it's Castiglione, the uh, shortstop, who grabs that for the out, one away. See all those fair ratings um, there as there's another pop-up over to Castiglione by Fletcher, who's uh, having his first start here of the season. This is L.B. Fletcher. That was his actually his second plate appearance of the season. He was one for one beforehand. Tommy Holmes up there now. I was going to say, you can see all the fair and poor ratings here in the uh, outfield for the uh, Pirates, and I've been taking note of that because when we get to later innings, we may have to change that depending on who's le- leading. Tommy Holmes hits a little ground ball over to uh, Stevens at first, who uh, flips over to uh, Worley covering, and we go to the bottom of the second. Still no score, no hits, no nothing. Here's Wally Westlake up against Spawn, and he takes a ball and then hits a little uh, curveball up uh, to uh, Ryan, the shortstop. He throws the first for the out, one away. Ed Stevens up there now, who takes the ball. Hits one to the right side, and that one is through Fletcher for a base hit. So Stevens has the first hit of the ball game for either team, and that'll bring up Clyde McCulloch. And uh, Stevens has a little bit of ability to run, but not much, so we'll go ahead and play it straight up here. McCulloch takes the strike, and there's a ball low, one and one the count now on Clyde. It's a sinker on the outside corner that's in there for a strike is one and two, and uh, McCulloch tries to uh, hold his uh, check his swing, rather, and he doesn't. He goes around, and that's strike three. Three strikeouts for Spawn here, and we're only in the bottom of the second. Monty Bascal up there now takes the ball high, one and oh the count. That's inside. It's two and oh on Monty. There's a breaking ball in there for a strike, two and one the count now. And that one is high, three and one now the count on Monty. And that's popped up. He was jammed on that one. That's popped up over to Eddie Stanky, the second baseman, for the third out. We'll go to the top of the third inning, and here comes Stanky. Um, and he takes the ball, hitting 298, pretty well for a guy who's hitting in seventh place. And his on base percentage, especially, has been good. Three and oh, the count now on him. And he takes ball four, and that's walk number 21 for Stanky. That'll bring up Phil Macy. And Stanky, of course, a little bit quick, and uh, Macy puts a pop-up over to Castiglione short for the first out. That's what the third or fourth pop-up Castiglione has handled so far. One away, and here's Spawn. 
He bunts at it, misses. Owen won the count. And what's popped up back and out of play, it's 0-2 on Spawn. You'll notice I don't have the infield in at all because it doesn't matter, and Spawn bunts that one foul, and that's a strikeout, second strikeout for Worley. Here comes Pete Reeser, and he takes a ball low, 1-0 the count, and that uh, one is inside, 2-0, and, and there's the little, uh, oh, man, that was a strike to him, and Stanky was running for second, and it was a good throw by McCulloch, who was able to get him, nails him by uh, uh, getting the uh, throw. It's a little bit off to the right, and it was Castiglione, actually, who grabbed that one and uh, was able to pull the uh, ball over to grab Nab Stanky just in time before he hit the bag, and we go to the bottom of the third inning now, still uh, no score. Bill Worley up there for the Pirates. And he takes a strike. Owen won the count. Worley, uh, well, for a pitcher hitting okay, 188. Uh, fouls that one back. One and two now the count. And that's fouled off of the catcher. Still one and two. Fouled at the plate. One and two the count remains. That's swung on. That's going to be a foul tip. That's going to be a strikeout number four for Spawn. And here comes Ralph Kiner. Kiner was on with a walk earlier today in the first inning. And he takes a strike. Owen won the count. Everybody wondering why I want to uh, hit Ralph Kiner leadoff. With the amount of power he has, I don't see why you wouldn't. One and two now the count. We want to get him all the plate appearances we can. Ryan, or uh, Kiner rather, hits a ground ball to Ryan, and the shortstop has it and drops it and unable to recover, and Kiner's on at first base. That's the other reason why you want Kiner to lead off, because he uh, gets to first base a lot. That'll bring up Castiglione, runner on at first. There's a blooper into a right field, and uh, that's going to be a base hit. We're going to play it safe with Kiner. I know it's a little scaredy cat of my, uh, uh, on my own part, but um, I don't want to run us out of an inning. I'll bring up Eddie Bachman now with runners on at first and second as Castiglione got that little base hit, sort of flung that one over right in front of Tommy Holmes in right field. Bachman up there, one out, and the question is, do we send these runners or do we have them uh, go up straight? And let's see what happens if we send them. And uh, there's a line drive over into right field over to Holmes, who makes the catch, and he throws over to second, is able easily to uh, get uh, Kiner before he returns to the bag. So the hit and run backfires on us, and we go to the top of the fourth. Still no score. Here's Pete Reeser, and we didn't have a whole lot of chances for that with him first ball swinging. One and one the count now on Reeser. That's inside two and one the count now. It's a beauty of a breaking ball by Bill Worley, and it's uh, two and two now on Pete. It's off the plate. Full count now on Pete, and he lays off of that one and takes the walk. That'll bring up Connie Ryan. Still no hits for the re- for the uh, Braves. Ryan takes a strike and uh, fouls one back. 0-2 oh, the count now on Connie. It's popped up and out of play. 0-2 oh, the count remains, and there's a swing and a miss on a strike three. Third strike out there for Bill. And here's Marv Ricker with one out. Runner on at first. See if we can get a double play. There's a strike to him, and there's a ground ball to the right side, and that goes through for a base hit. That's the first hit of the game, and uh, Walker is going to throw here to third base and is unable to catch Reeser, and so the aggressive base running does pay off for Boston. That will bring up Jim Russell now. Russell not much of a bunter. I think we're going to concede the run at the play, try for the double play. There's a ball outside. Want to know the count that's inside. It's 2-0 now to Russell. That's fouled straight on back, 2-1 the count. That's low. Three and one the count on him, and there's a ground ball over to Bascal. That's a routine ball, and Bascal misses it. That goes right under his glove, and that will allow the run to score and uh, allows Russell to reach first base. And so there are now runners on at first and second, and it's one nothing Boston here at top of the fourth inning. This is that bad luck that Worley's had, and it, there's a ground ball by Fletcher. First pitch he sees goes right through the legs of Castiglione. The bases are now loaded, and Worley's bad luck continues. He pitches well. He's doing well, doing everything he needs to, and he's got two errors behind him. We really have to wonder about putting out these fielders who are not as good as they could be. That'll bring up Tommy Holmes. And there's a strike in there to Holmes. 0-1 oh, the count. 1-1 one one now. Base is loaded. Only one hit in this game for the Braves. 2-1 and one the count on Tommy. That's fouled away. 2-2 two and two the count. And there's a line shot over to right center field. Westlake unable to get to that one. And that's going to score two. Sends Fletcher to third. And it's a 3-0 lead now. Uh, the uh, second hit by the Braves in this game. That'll bring up Eddie Stanky. So it's falling apart slowly for the Pirates here this season. That's inside for a ball to Eddie. And there's one foul back. 1-1 one and one the count. That's a uh, two-seamer low, two and one, and there's a uh, ground ball over to third base. Bachman has it, goes to second for one, on to first for the double play, and we go finally to the bottom of the fourth inning. Now three-nothing Braves, and that'll bring up Dixie Walker. There's a strike in there to Walker, 0-1 oh, the count. There's another strike to him. It's 0-2, oh, and, and he swings and misses that one a low uh, pitch that was way out of the zone for a strikeout. Spawn with his fifth strikeout of the game, and there's one away now for Wally Westlake. And he grounds one 
by third base and fair down the line, and Westlake is able to reach into uh, second base before uh, Rickard's able to get it on a clean double. That'll bring up Ed Stevens now. Runner on his second base and one out for the Pirates. And here is Stevens, and he belts that one deep to left, and it's not quite deep enough as Rickard's able to make the catch right in front of Greenberg's garden. And Westlake then moves on to third. Here's Clyde McCulloch with a runner on a third, but two outs, and he takes a strike. Owen won the count on him. One and one now to McCulloch as that one missed. That's inside for a ball, two and one. That's pulled over to left center field, and Rickard goes over, and he's got that for the out, and we go to the top of the fifth inning, and it's Phil Macy. Only two hits for the Braves so far, but three runs as Macy takes the ball inside and then fouls one away, one and one the count. We've been talking about the fielding all day long. There's a little ground ball over to first, and Stevens lets that one roll, and it curves just foul. One and two now is the uh, count on Macy. We've talked about the fi- pirate feeling all day long, and I think it's come to catch up to them. One and two the count, and he checks his swing, and he doesn't check it, so that's strike three called. He swung at it. That's the fourth strikeout for Bill. Like I said, he's a good strikeout pitcher. Doesn't walk a lot of guys. Having a lot of problems here, though, in this one. There's a strike to spawn, and another strike as he swings and misses at that one. And it's swung on a miss for strike three. Fifth strikeout for Bill Worley, and he's up there with spawn all the way. There's a ball to Reeser, and there's a pop-up, and uh, McCulloch grabs that one for the out. We go to the bottom of the fifth inning, and uh, now's the time to potentially make a change. Trying to think of what we want to do. So when we go look at uh, who we have to hit here, and uh, who played a lot in real life. I'm looking at what we could do to bring Stan Rojek in. So the idea here is we probably would take Pascal out and um, have, uh, let's see here, have Castiglione uh, play third, and then I suppose have Bachman play second. Either that or we could also put in uh, Danny Murtaugh to play second, and we would sacrifice a whole bunch of offense to have a player who's a little bit better. Um, and so I think that's what we're going to do. We're going to uh, put uh, Rojak in the game here in this position and uh, see if we can't uh, make a little bit of a difference here. Stan Rojak only hitting 107 this season, which is why I haven't been starting him. He had 550 at-bats in, real, in real life, so I should probably play him. Two and one is the count on him now. And that's pulled deep to left field. Rickard has that for the out, one away, and that'll bring up Bill Worley. We'll leave him in, of course. He's pitching well, and he takes a strike. Owen one's the count. There's another strike. It's 0-2. And fastball's in close, one and two. There's a little ground ball over to uh, Ryan, the shortstop, who makes the play and throws the first for the out, two away. And here's Ralph Kiner, who takes a strike. Owen won the count. There's a swing and a miss on the high fastball. It's 0 and 2. That's low, one and two the count now. That swung on a miss for strike three. There's that sinker, and uh, that does it. And now we're going to make our wonderful defensive position change. So Rojek is going to go over to shortstop. Castiglione will go over to third. And uh, over to play second base is going to be Danny Murtaugh. And uh, let's see if this does something. Maybe this will spark something in the Pirates, or uh, maybe they'll just go down quietly. Very, very much improved uh, defense, at least up close. And so we'll see if that makes a difference. Connie Ryan up there now takes a strike. Owen one's the count on him. And 1-1 one one is that one was low, top of the sixth inning. There's a ball to Ryan, 2-1 and one the count. 3 nothing for the Braves as Ryan hits a fly ball over to Dixie Walker in right field for the first out, one away. Marv Rickards up there, takes a strike of the knees. Owen one's the count on him, and there's one hit over to right field. Walker going back, going back on that one, and he's able to catch up with it right in front of the 385-foot sign for the second out. Here comes Jim Russell. Russell uh, takes a strike. Owen one is the count on him, and there's a ground ball over to Rojek, the uh, new shortstop who makes the play. It was a little tricky, and uh, throws the first for the out. We go to the bottom of the sixth inning, and it's Pete Castiglione to lead this off for the Pirates. And he hits one over the left side, and there's a uh, ground ball to Reeser, who has it for the first time, first uh, chance of the game, and he bobbles it a little bit, throws the first for the out, one away. That brings up Danny Murtaugh. Now, the problem with these defensive players is that they're not hitting well. Murtaugh hits a fly ball over to uh, the left side. It's a pop-up, actually. Macy, the catcher, has the hep for the second out. First ball swinging, two away, and it's Dixie Walker. Takes the ball outside. And there's another one off the plate. Two and no the count on Walker quickly, and that's a fastball up and in. It's three and no, and that's high, and Walker walks, and that puts a runner on at first base for Wally Westlake. Three hits for the Pirates, two for the Braves. Quiet game so far. Westlake takes the ball. And there's one hit down the first base line and foul. One and one the count. There's a fastball high and outside two and one the count. That swung on a miss. Two and two the count on Westlake. That's lined down the first base line. That'll be a base hit. And here comes Walker around to score. 
That's a double, at least for Westlake. It is a double for him, and that uh, throw by Holmes is offline, and that allows the Pirates to score their first run of the ball game. It's now a three-run game on that double by Westlake, only hit number four for Pittsburgh, and here comes Ed Stevens. So maybe the defensive substitutions have done the trick. Stevens hits one far down the right field line. That baby's gone, and that makes it a brand-new ball game. 3-3, the score tied. I was about to talk about the Pirates really losing their momentum, and they've tied this ball game all of a sudden here in the bottom of the sixth, and here comes Clyde McCulloch. So 3-3 now the score after those defensive substitutions, and Clyde fouls one away, 0-1 the count. It's on the outside for a strike, 0-2, and, and there's one that misses. 1-2 and two the count now on Clyde, and that's low 2-2. Two and two. And uh, he gets that over to left field, and that's down to the wall, and that's a double off of the uh, door there to Greenberg Gardens, and uh, that'll bring up Stan Rojek again. Stan hitting now 103, 188 on base percentage. It doesn't matter what metric you use. It's going to look bad. And what do they do? They walk him intentionally. It's one of the most ridiculous things that I've seen. Um, in fact, it's so ridiculous that um, we're going to uh, uh, take a little bit of a, a picture of this so we can save this for posterity. This is one of the more ridiculous uh, decisions I've seen the computer manager um, uh, come up with uh, so far in uh, Diamond Mine Baseball. I mean, because if you're looking at how he is in real life, I mean, it kind of makes sense. But in the scope of the replay, this would never happen. You wouldn't walk a player who, you know, hasn't been starting and who's hitting all of, you know, whatever it is. Uh, he's hitting 103 or whatever. I mean, the pitcher's got a better average than he does. Um Anyway, there we go. We have the pictures, and we'll be able to say something about that. Um, here is now Bill Worley with two outs. He's going to swing away, and uh, he hits a little ground ball over to Fletcher, the first baseman who flips over to Spawn, covering a first for the out, and we go to the top of the seventh. Um, so I guess the intentional rock to, walk to a stand was worth it. L.B. Fletcher now takes a ball, and there's one that gets through into left field for a base hit, and that's hit number three for the Braves, and here comes Tommy Holmes. 3-3 ball game. All of a sudden, this has been become exciting. Holmes bunted one up in the air, and Worley jumps off the mound and grabs that one for the out. Fletcher's able to hold it first, somehow, one away, and here's Eddie Stanky, and so the bunt doesn't pay off, and there's a strike in there to Eddie. And there's a ball low, one and one the count now on Eddie, and there's a pop-up foul, one and two is the count. There's a little drive over to short center field, and that's going to be a base hit for Stanky. Puts Fletcher over to second, and Phil Macy comes up there now. Macy not hitting so well this season. The catcher fouls one away, 0-1 oh, the count on him. That's fouled straight back, it's 0-2. Oh, there's a check swing, and it's just a foul ball. Oh, and two, the count remains. It's inside for a ball, one and two now. There's a foul ball on the fastball, still one and two. And there's a good sinker, and that's a swing and a miss for strike three. That's strikeout number six collected by Worley. And here comes Warren Spawn, top of the seventh inning, uh, two outs, two on. There's a strike to Spawn and a ball, one and one the count. There's strike two in there as he was looking. There's a ground ball over to Murtaugh. Danny has it, throws over to first for the out. We go to the bottom of the seventh. And uh, it's going to be Ralph Kiner leading things off. 3-3 ball game. There's a ball tight. 1-0 the count. And that one's hit deep to left field, but hooks foul. 1-1 the count now on Ralph. And there's one lifted up and just foul out of reach. 1-2 the count now on Kiner. Liner again foul. 1-2 remains. And that's fouled away again. 1-2 still. And there's one high. 2-2 two two the count. Another foul ball. 2-2 two two still. And there's a sinker that we're guessing is wide um, for ball three. Full count now on Ralph. And that's hit hard deep to left field and out of here. And uh, that call will stand after the umpires huddle and talk about it. And that is a home run. Of course, there's no challenge in 1949, but does this game realize it? I'm not always sure. That is a home run for Ralph Kiner, and that's a clean home run over uh, the uh, left field wall again into Greenberg Gardens. Um that makes this a 4-3 ball game, and uh, we had a little bit of drama there with the uh, umpires uh, sort of standing around, and uh, they ruled that that one was a fair ball and a home run. Kiner was fouling balls away to the left side over and over and over again, and um, he was getting around very well in Warren Spahn's uh, fastball, and uh, that is a 4-3 ball game now, and here's P. Castiglione. Takes a strike. The screwball on their own won the count. And there's one hit off the end of the bat over to center field. And that drops in front of Russell for a base hit. That'll bring up Danny Murtaugh. Murtaugh, who uh, really shouldn't be hitting third, um, has a runner on first base with nobody out. And uh, what are we going to do? We're going to bunt? Yeah, we're going to bunt with him since he's against the left-hander. There's a foul at the plate. Owen won the count now on Danny. 
And that one's in the dirt. One and one to count on him now. And that's a bunt down rolling towards third, first base. Murtaugh gives himself up as a Fletcher fields it, throws over to West Stanky for the out because Tiglione moves up to second, and that'll bring up Dixie Walker. One out only, and the Pirates have two chances to get this run in. And there's a ball high to Walker, 1-0 oh the count. There's a little ground ball over to third base. Reeser looks Castiglione back, throws to first for the out, two away. And it's Wally Westlake, Westlake two for three today. And uh, he's going to be put on. He has five RBIs in the series, they were telling us. That'll bring up Ed Stevens. Stevens also two for three today. Westlake on at first, Castiglione on at second, two outs, bottom of the seventh, 4-3 ball game. It was a high strike to Stevens, 0-1 the count. And there's one fouled off, 0-2. There's a little uh, line drive over to first base, or rather grounder, and Fletcher makes the play, flips to spawn covering, and we go to the top of the eighth. P. Reeser comes up there, and the Pirates have had their chances, haven't been able to convert. One ball on Reeser, and he pops one up, and uh, Danny Murtaugh's got that pop-up for the first out. One away, and hits Connie Ryan. Ryan takes a strike, 0-1 oh, the count, and hits one deep to left field and just foul. That was actually more than just foul, about 10 feet foul. 0-2 oh, the count on Ryan, and that's foul back. 0-2 oh, the count remains. There's a ball to him. It's one and two. Swung on a miss, and that's in the dirt. And uh, McCulloch um, is able to grab that one. Throws over to first for the out. That's strike on number seven for Bill Worley, who, I've, as I've said, has been pitching really well. Um, and uh, that'll bring up Marv Ricker. Let's see if the luck is there for Bill. And here comes Bob Elliott to a hit for Ricker. It's a fly ball over to Walker in right field for the out, and that does it. And Sibby Sisti will come in now to play uh, left field. We go to the bottom of the eighth inning, and it's uh, Clyde McCulloch who's up there now for the Pirates against uh, Spawn, who stays in there. There's a ball outside, 1-0 and the count. There's another one off the plate, 2-0 and the count. That's foul back, 2-1 and one the count now on McCulloch. Swing and a miss of that one, it's 2-2. Two and two. And there is strike three, and Spawn gets him uh, swinging, and that's the seventh strikeout for Warren Spawn today. One away, and here's Stan Rojek. And he takes a, or he swings and misses a one outside. Beg your pardon, no one won the count. There's a foul ball, it's 0 and 2. And there's another one swung on and miss, and that's strike on number eight. Eight strikeouts now for Spawn, and that'll bring up the pitcher Worley. We're going to leave him in. And uh, he takes a strike, 0 and 1 the count. That's one foul the way, 0 and 2 now to Worley. Popped up, out of play. 0 and 2 the count remains. And there's a called strike three, number nine for Spawn. And we go to the top of the ninth. Nine strikeouts in this game for Warren Spawn, and here comes uh, Jim Russell for the Braves. Um, uh, down by one, four to three, the score. One and one now the count on Russell, and there's one in the dirt. Ball two, two and one the count. That swung on a miss, two and two. There's a little ground ball over to Rojek. Uh, the uh, shortstop's got a hurry, throws the first four of the out, and gets him uh, one away, and here's LB Fletcher. Uh, Fletcher takes the curve inside, one and oh the count. That's on the inside for a strike, one and one the count, and there's a swing and a miss, it's one and two. That's a little bit wide, two and two on Fletcher. And there is that good fastball by Worley, the one that sinks a bit, and that's uh, strikeout number eight for him, and that'll bring up Tommy Holmes. Two outs, top of the ninth, four, three score, and there's a ball there to Holmes, one and no the count, another ball, it's two and oh. That's high and outside of a ball, three, three and oh, and he gets a bit of black on that one, three and one the count. There's a foul ball, full count now on Holmes. And there's a uh, line drive over to left center field. Sounded good. Westlake running after that one running and is able to catch up with that one for the out. And that does it. So the Pirates able to win this ball game after being down 3 nothing and looking pretty foolish about doing it. I'm going to have to change up this lineup because this defensive setup is much better. Much fewer errors when we play this way. 4-3 to three is the final score. And uh, we'll see you tomorrow with more action. Bye-bye.